All right, Dad, what game are we playing today? We are playing 1775 Rebellion. And as, I, as you can guess from the date, the year, the name, and the picture, this is about the American Revolution, where we are battling over the original colonies, battling for control. It's a two to four player game. Uh, there's four different factions, as you can see here. We've got a Continental Army, we've got a Patriot Militia, we've got a Loyalist Militia, and the British Regulars. Also, waiting over here in the wing, we have the German Hesians as well as the French regulars that can come into play for their side. French for the American side and the German Hesians for the British side. So you've got those fighting back and forth. Uh, you've got these four factions, but you can play it as a two-player game, and it's actually really well done as a two-player game as well where you take turns back and forth. But essentially, you are battling for control of the original colonies, as you can see here. Uh, they've got a lot of different areas. Once an area is under control, for example, here in Connecticut as well as Rhode Island, they're fully controlled by the uh, Continental Army and the Patriot Militia, so they've got their uh, American flag under control. You can see the British are controlling Quebec and things like that, uh, as well as down here in uh, Delaware. So control is going to go back and forth, and at the end of the game, which is a variable number of rounds, at the end of the game, whoever's controlling the most colonies is going to win the game. Wow, that sounds exciting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The way that it's played is fantastic. This is from Academy Games, the same ones that made uh, Freedom, the Underground Railroad, another very historic game. This one, likewise, it brings out the history very well uh, with the amount of with what's on the cards and stuff, the way it plays. Uh, I think it's just really interesting and, and a lot of back and forth, a lot of fun. brings out brings out history in a in a fun way. All right, so why don't you tell us how to play? All right, I will do that. Well, to start off, you can see the board is set out. There are already set out indicators on there of which is going to go out there. So, for example, here you've got two of the uh, Loyalist Militia. Here you should have a second one of the Patriot Militia as well. As you can go through, you can see some of these. Like Connecticut, you've got a couple of the uh, Continental Army and the Patriot Militia already in there. So you set those out. The green represent Native Americans. And those are independent, but they will ally with whichever forces comes in and works together with them, be it either side. So that's an interesting mechanic as well as the way the Native Americans play into it. So that's how you set it up. Uh, in addition to that, what we've got here in the bag are some colored dice for each of the factions. You will draw one out, for example, yellow. And what yellow gets to do is they get to take four of their units and place them out in areas that they already control. So maybe they want to do some more control out here and another one over there. We'll draw the next one out. This is still part of the setup. Next one is blue. So he can say, oh, well, I, I wonder what he's been building up. I'm going to actually build up a couple. Try to go for the south down here. We'll see what's going to be next. We'll be red. They can pull out the British. They're going to pull out there. Same thing. Maybe they want to do a lot of battling in here, or they see that, you know what, we're going to have to take over from, from Boston. And then, of course, the last one is white, and they put their four out. So they say, well, you know what, some battles are going on down in the south. I better get down there and see what uh, I can help out with. And then that's set up. So these go back in the bag, and I'll show you a pretty cool thing about this. It is variable turnover, down, turn order. Down here we have the rounds. You see different number of rounds. After round three is when you start checking for for win conditions. We're in round one, and you've also got turnover. So it's variable. Each time when a round begins, you pull out the dice from the bag. You pull out red. So red is going to get to go first. Hmm. And you're not going to know who gets to go second, so it's not always clockwise. You don't always know they're going to go, and then, and then the Continental Army going to go, and then their militia. It changes each time. So you've got to be on your toes for what can happen in in the battles. But what's cool for helping with turnovers, you've got this reference sheet. It shows a number of things. You can strategize with this. It also shows you a little bit about what the different factions are, what their dice results are going to be. But over here it tells you the sequence of play. So it's a good reference. There's two of these and each side can take them. For example, you could plan here so your opponent doesn't see where you're looking on the map. You can be looking at this trying to figure out your, your moves as well. But that's got a good reference sheet. I'll just set this aside for now so you can see what's going on. Another thing I'll mention, if you are playing with four players, uh, actually we'll start with red because it's red's turn. From his deck of 12 cards, 
That's a mix of mo movement cards and event cards. And I'll go over what those are in a minute. He'll take three cards. Likewise, the Loyalists, Loyalist Militia, they will have taken three cards. And as a team, they get to look at each other's cards. They get to share information. So they can go back and forth and discuss amongst themselves saying, you know, here we go. Here we've got this information. I've got some movement cards. I've got some event cards. Oh, look, you've got a warship movement card. So we can strategize. So even though it's uh, Red's turn, the British regular's turn, they can see what's coming up that their loyalists have because they will work together. So for example, what you do in your first one is a reinforcement phase. So what this means is you'll take four new units. They have to come into cities, not like at the start where I could place them anywhere, cities and colonies that they control. So for example, their, their side controls Delaware and there's a city of Dover in Delaware. So since this is under British control, I can bring in units into that city. Likewise, I can't bring people into Boston because that's not under my control, neither is New York City, but I do have Quebec under control, so I can bring in some units into the city, so I can bring them into Montreal, for example. So that's how you place some reinforcements out. Also, if there are fled units, we'll get to in a minute, those also come back at the reinforcement phase. So anybody that's run away is going to come back into battle and set it up. Then the next stage is movement. The active player has to play a movement card. So what I have here are warship movements as well as land movement. The warship movement says that I can move one army from one spot of land, one area, across a body of water to another spot of land that's adjoining that same body of water. And I can do that for a second army as well. So let me describe what armies are. Armies are any number of units. Let's take a look here in Delaware then. So even though it's Red's turn, I can take a yellow with me. Any number of units comprise an army, so that could be an army. I could take all of them if I wanted to, but that would leave Delaware independent and it wouldn't be under control. Or I could say, you know what, I just want to go by myself, or I can take just one of one. So I can form an army. So let's say that I will play the this one here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these from this spot, I'm going to move them over a body of water, and why don't I move them into Rhode Island, just for some fun. So I can move them into an enemy spot and there's going to be a battle there. My next units, say I take some people from an army from Halifax that I made into an army, and I'm going to sail them into, let's make it a fun one, I'm going to sail them clear down to South Carolina into that spot and there's going to be a battle there. So now after I've done my movement, I discard that card and those will not come into play. So those will be out for the game once you've played a card. The next phase is battle phase. So I'll show you how battles are reserved. So let's go down here to South Carolina. The, the faction coming in, or I guess the side coming in, uh, is the attacker. These are the defenders. And the defenders get to roll first. So we have three units of the Continental Army and one of the Patriot Militia. You take the number of dice based off of the number of units you have in that army. Unfortunately, I don't have more than two blue dice, so I'll take two blue dice and I'll take the one white dice and I will roll those first. Or I should say the team controlling the Continental Army will roll his and the team controlling the Patriot Militia will roll his. So here's the results. A white is a hit. So they struck somebody and the opposing team needs to pick which one they're going to pull out. Well, since I'm only going to have red dice, I'm going to pull out one of these. The red unit was killed. That's what a hit is. The flee means one, mem one unit of this army runs away, which happened a lot. There were deserters. So blue has to have one of these flee. They have to flee the fled units, go over here, and they will come back into play when it's blue's time to start their turn. The other one is a blank. What this means is they can make a command decision. So they can choose to depart into another area. They can't go into an enemy unit ground, but they could go into an independent or into a spot with some of their own um, sides. Or you can stay put, and in this case, he's going to stay put. Then, that's the British side, so they get their two dice. The yellow faction gets to take his. Likewise, they will roll. They get two hits. I'm going to decide to take out these two. They are dead. And then yellow can decide whether he's going to leave or not. 
he decides to say. Well, now it goes back and forth. As long as there's still units in there to battle, they keep going. Blue rolls the one die. It's a hit. They lose a unit. And likewise, red is down. And now it's just one red and one yellow. They roll. Red hits. They are out. So now that they have taken control down here in, in that area. And that's what ends the battle. So that was one battle. Then you go up here to Boston and you would do the same battle. Same battle commence. All right, so we did our second battle. I didn't show you the results, but what happened is the British Army got skunked and they were defeated. So at the end of that, then the red draws back up to three cards. If they had played an event card, so for example, here's an event card that gives you this. Each of these card decks have their own unique events. That one you can say, replace a Continental Army with a British regular in any area. That would be pretty cool. Um, but we're going to save that for later. They draw back up to three cards in their hand, and that's the end of their turn. Then, that's one person's turn. It goes on to the next. Let's see who it comes out to be. Well, look at that. That's the Loyalist Militia. And then yellow gets to go. Once you hit the third round, and every subsequent round thereafter, you're going to look for the end, end conditions. And I'll show you what the end conditions are. Each faction has a card that says Truce. It's also a movement card. So when this is played, you can see this moves four armies up to two spaces. But when a Truce card is played, that gets placed up here on its area. So for the Continental Army, they're going to place their Truce card there during the play of the game. Uh, likewise, let's find their Truce card. If the Militia play their Truce card, at the end of this round, when one side has placed both of their truce cards, that will be the last round of the game. So let's say at the end of round five, they've played both of their truce cards. We check to see who wins. We're going to take a look at the flags to find out who's in, in control. Right now we've got three for the British and two for the Americans, mainly because we really haven't battled back and forth in this scenario. Uh, and then it would say the British win in that case. Those are nice, easy to flip over both sides' tokens. So that's how you play it, that's how you check it, it's a lot of battling back and forth. And so one of the things that, uh, there's a number of things I really enjoy about it. First off, I like the time period uh, that they were dealing with, I like the historical aspect that it's brought into it, but I really like just the way it plays. The different things you have to think of with your dice, the way you move armies, um, the way you need to watch which units you're moving with those armies, because you may want to move as with this chance here. When red was moving in, they took some of the yellow with them to take them into a new position. So then when it's the Loyalist Militia's turn, they, they can continue moving from that spot. So there's just a lot of cool things that you can do plan back and forth or as a two-player game. Uh, it's just a lot of history going on. Uh, there's other slight, not much more as far as difficult rules. That's really the basics of it. There's a few fine things like when you're moving an army, you can't drop off units or pick up units as you go through. So for example, if he went through this friendly unit, he couldn't pick up units as he went, um, things like that. But those are just minor things that you'll learn as you read the rules yourself. But it's it's really easy to understand, easy to play. You've got your reference sheet, which makes it nice um, and, and just fun. Again, you're going to come into the element of luck of the dice roll, of what's going to happen. Just when you think you've got the upper hand, you're going to roll some dice and all of your units are going to flee. Uh, the command decision is can be done really strategically. Uh, big thumbs up. Uh, I would rate uh, 1775 Rebellion a 4.5. Wow, all right. Yeah, really like this one. Okay, anything else to say? Not that I can think of right now. All right, thanks, Dad. All right. All right.